ladies and gentlemen, but a lot has changed in the last couple of years. So welcome doctors, some familiar faces and certainly some new faces. And I wanna give you an introduction to MIS and especially TJ on who teaches concierge service. I've never done anything other than concierge service <laughs> since the day I began. And my roots are here in Chicago, where I spent three years with one of the pioneers, the original pioneers of MIS. And I, I learned more in three months than four years of podiatry school. And, and we've all been trained in traditional procedures, but I never looked back. Outside of all the to give you an indication, outside of all the other four foot surgeries we did, 40 bunion corrections a day, five days a week, was Disneyland. So, MIS is great. I don't expect you, I, I'm sure there's skeptics in here, and I don't expect everybody to integrate MIS into their practice. There are a lot of traditional surgeons out there who, who do integrate some or all of it. And that's wonderful. If you're skeptical, we may change your mind this weekend. And especially my esteemed colleagues who are here to help you instruct. We love to share our experiences and our skills. And that's our passion. Anybody in here done lapoplasty, mini, mini bunion, 2D correction, 3D, 4D, 5D, put up your hand. Okay, so a few of you have. That's the furthest thing from minimally invasive surgery. They call it that, but you'll see it's the furthest thing. Is there really a reason to have but once you've completed your surgery in bone teal, is there a reason to have metal left in a foot? I don't think so, unless you're doing hypocure procedure. Yeah, the stent stays in. But we're gonna show you something a little different this, this weekend. I call it most innovative surgery. And there's a reason for all that. It is very innovative. And today I'm going to teach you the most simple procedure you can do. So I don't expect you to go to your offices on Monday and do a bunion procedure, but you can certainly try this procedure. It's really easy. Um, <laughs> you want your foot look, to look like that? Do you think your patients do? I don't. Look at it. Is that minimally invasive? That's a lot of suture. <laughs> I get a little sweat. <laughs> Listen, if you're performing your procedures in the hospital, now I know what the weather's like in Chicago. I practice in Toronto, it's no different. You get in your car in the winter, you drive to the hospital, you find parking, you change into your scrubs, you do your pre operative, wait for the anesthesia. You do your case, you do your charting, there's recovery. You get back in your car, you go back to the office. In that time, I've done four bunion corrections in my office. Don't you have better things to do in your life? So if you integrate MIS, you'll have more time to spend with the things you enjoy and it can be done quite well in the office. Now, I don't judge anybody. If you're doing traditional surgery, that's fine. Whatever works best in your hands and has great patient outcomes, go for it. If you want to integrate a little bit of MIS into your practices, I encourage it. But no one's going to force you to. But you'll have very, very happy patients. Yes, there are naysayers out there who say, MIS doesn't work, it's destined to fail. 
the deformities come back. Ask those naysayers how many MIS procedures they've done so that they can compare. I'll give you some evidence. I have written an article, evidence-based. They all want evidence-based. And there are articles out there. I've been doing it over 39 years exclusively. Take bunions, for example. I've never redone one. I've never had a transfer lesion. I've never had a dorsiflex head of the first. I don't use any internal fixation. I never put one suture in any of my procedures, and I've never had a lawsuit. That's evidence-based. So think about it, keep an open mind this weekend. Dr. On is wonderful, his master class. He teaches the whole gamut, how to set up a clinic, the con changing patient mindset, to concierge service, he teaches it all. It's, it, it's great to get integrated with Dr. Ron. Um, let's face it, insurance in the United States is changing. As of January 1st, if you do your procedures in your office, you're getting a 20% bonus. And how long do you think insurance companies are gonna pay for a laparoplasty for you? Four or $5,000 and you get $650? They're gonna stop paying for it. They're getting too smart. So this has its benefits. So I wanna just go through a couple things with you. My topic is the flexor tendon release. It's probably the easiest procedure you can do, minimally invasive, but you have to do it right. So we all see cases of this, where we'll see a distal lesion and especially, even if the patient's diabetic, you don't want them to lose their toe because it's plantar flex. If you can bring it up a bit and get rid of that lesion, they're out of danger. So this is a patient, both their third and fourth toe are plantar flex, they're pulled down. So I'm holding, I'm, uh, one of my assistants is dorsal flexing the third, showing you basically, I want, your incision here for flexor release to be vertical. I want that blade vertical when you go in because as you dorsiflex the foot, as you straighten it, the incision closes. But if you put the scalpel in horizontally and flex that toe, it's gonna open, okay? And the easiest way to know if a flexor tenotomy is gonna work is take the toe and bend it. If it bends easily, then chances are a flexor will work. If there's some resistance, then you may have to go with the diaphysectomy and do arthroplasty, whatever you choose, to get that toe straight. But if it flexes on its own, flexor tenotomy will work just fine. I love this instrument. Uh, Keystone Medical, Eric out there, uh, he used to make, it's double-sided, so it has a scalpel handle and a rasp on the end, other end, small rasp. And he used to make the rasp at about a 45 degree angle. I didn't like it. So I had him start making me straight angled rasps. You don't need it for, for a flexor release, but I use it for all my procedures. Because once I go down to bone with the scalpel, I like to get rid of the capsule, get underneath, whatever. And if I use that small rasp instead of an elevator, I'm right against bone, so I know I'm exactly where I want to be. So you don't have to stop and pick up another instrument. It's all there in one instrument. It, it's just wonderful. Now, you can use any of these to do a flexor tenotomy. So very commonly is the 64 blade, the 67 blade, they're side cutting. You can see the edges on the side. The, sorry. The mini 67 is a very long side cutting. This, this particular blade 
is pretty dangerous. So you really have to know what you're doing because it's very sharp and it's very aggressive that you can use it. 62 and 61 blades. The 62 is a little larger, it's a chisel blade. I personally like the 62 or 61. You can also use an 18 gauge needle because that'll cut the tendon as well. I buy my blades from Havels. I find it's the cheapest beaver blades are way too expensive. Hmm. Now, what I do for the procedure is, I have them hold their, hold their ankle back as far as they can get it. I dorsiflex the digit I'm working on. I take the blade, I put it in vertically, right through the skin. Once I'm through the skin, I twist the blade horizontally, and it's like cutting, it sounds and feels like cutting lettuce. So you can feel it release, you can feel it in your other hand that you're holding the, the digit with, and you can ask the patient to flex their toes down. If they can't flex the one you worked on, you know you've got the entire tendon. And sometimes, if you dorsiflex the toe, if you've left one or two fibers, no problem. They'll, they'll just cut on their own. For three weeks after, I like to keep the toes in proper alignment. So I have them wear one of these pads. This is from uh, Jilly's foot pad. Uh, so I have them put this cotton loop over the digit and it sits under all the digits like that. I tell them to wear it 24-7 for about three weeks. So it keeps it nice and aligned and they can pull that string down to tighten it or take it off for a shower. It's like a gel foam. Uh, the other one I use is this, uh, which here in America sells for $6 a pair. I bring these in from China by the truckload, I pay about a dollar. Um, and, and we just hand them out. Genius. Um, Genius. It's, it's just the gel silicone and they work great. But you gotta keep, so instead of bandaging or taping, I just use this. Remember, I'm not using any sutures, so I don't have to worry about taking sutures out. I let them wear this, I let them wear their shoes, and the procedure itself should take you less than one minute. Is there anything else you can do in less than one minute? You can't have a sip of coffee in less than one minute. This is a wonderful procedure, it helps, especially if you've got diabetics who are at risk of losing a digit because of an ulceration at the tip of the toe. You can do this. There's no risk to a diabetic if you do this procedure. If anybody wants to know, concierge service, because I've never dealt with insurance companies, so I don't code, I don't worry about co-pay deductibles, accounts receivable, filling out forms. I don't want those headaches. I don't want that stress. Pure concierge service, $1,500, one time. Okay, I'd rather spend my time doing other things than driving to the hospital. If you want to watch any of the procedures, I video, I video a lot of my procedures to try and teach other practitioners, what I call the real minimally invasive surgery. You can go to the Dr. Cho channel and watch whatever you like, whatever doesn't turn your stomach. And all I ask for this weekend is keep an open mind. The procedures work. You have happy patients. The fam their family doctors don't know about them. When they see the results, when your patients show their doctors the results and tell them how fantastic their podiatrist is, wait till you see how many referrals you get. So keep an open mind, join up with TJ. It's, it's a great program and it'll lead the way for you.
Thank you for coming and enjoy your weekend.